Okay, so the first step for this, I went outside and I measured my wheels and basically got this measurement of the space of my sidewall. So the space of my sidewall was like 20, the, the inside diameter was like 20 and 3 quarters. The outside was 2 inches past that. So I went into um, Adobe Illustrator and I created a document that's 25 by 25 inches. From there I'm just going to draw some circles. I'm doing this all in real time so there's one. That one is 22.75 or the outside of my uh, diameter. And then I'll do another one that is two inches smaller or 20.75. My idea is to just make a stencil so that I can reuse this. So then I'll hit my align buttons to get that perfectly centered and we are good. Okay, so from there we are going to type. So I'm going to get my type tool, type on a path, and we'll do built. Just size that up a good bit for you to be able to see it. And there it is. Use my font. Cool. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we're good. So the whole point of making those lines, the big circles, was just so I would have this curve and it would be correct. Go back to the type tool and I'm just going to adjust this font a little bit. So we will take this and let's pull it down a little bit. I've got to watch this gap between the L and the I. Okay, I'm going to pull my B and the U closer together. See if I can. Oh yeah, did not know that was going to work. And <laughs> let's try that with this as well. Size that up real big. Now basically, just going to fill that whole area. I want the whole sidewall to have my name on it. All right. And then I need to make a built logo. Blah, a built logo. So I am going to show you all my secrets here. Nothing too major. And we'll just make another one of those. Make this one white. All right, I'm going to show you how to make a built logo. So you'll align those two, and we'll go Shift Alt. Wrong buttons. There we go. And the reason I'm making a new one is I want it to be more bold. Um, and if I just create outlines or make it more bold, then it'll close up the gaps between each piece. So we're just going to make a new one. It's fairly straightforward. Put a stroke on and crank that up till I think it looks right. I think that's probably going to be good. That's eight point. Do another one. This one. Gotta be at an angle. Probably should have done this first, but definitely should have just drawn that. Okay, cool. Uh, so that is our next one, and then we will copy that. That's, you'll have to ignore the baby talk in the background. There we go. So that's it. And then we'll take it. Whoops. Expand. Alright, so now we should have a pretty clean, yeah, pretty clean logo, and that will do it. Okay, cool, so that is our logo and about how it's going to look on the tire. It looks a little small to me right now, but I'm going to print it out. I've never done this before, so I'm going to print it out and just kind of see. Um, but I think that is going to work. Create outlines. That should, yeah, cool, okay. So now we've got this logo. It's gonna be good. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, you were printed from Photoshop. I'm gonna try that. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. So we need this. Okay, so for my end product, I'm going to use my cutting machine, but I figured most of you guys probably didn't have that. So I'm going to show you what I would do if I did not have a cutting machine, and that is just cut these things out by hand. Now, you can use a straight edge to be more exact, but I'm doing this just as a practice as, a, as kind of to show you what to do. So 
I'm gonna be pretty loose with this. Alright, so that's my stencil. Now if you wanted to keep the marks inside of the bee, I could just uh, create a line right here to each of those so that it would kind of be like a stencil line. I'm going to do that in my other cut, but this is not just kind of an example, so I didn't bother. So I'm going to use this on a spare tire when I'm doing the other one to show you kind of the results you can expect from copy paper and hand cut versus uh, cardstock and computer cut. Ooh, that's no good. So I ended up making two out of cardstock, and you can see this one ripped there and that one ripped there, which made me nervous about the longevity of these things. So what I'm gonna do is take both of them and glue them right on top of each other like that. That's one stencil, two layers of cardstock, and this is just the regular paper stencil. So I'm gonna do this one first and uh, see kind of how it does, <laughs> see what kind of results we can expect, and then we'll go do the real thing. Just some Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's got a primer in it, and it's supposed to stick to just about everything. So you'll wanna wash the tires and everything beforehand. All right, cool. So something you're gonna notice with this one is this kind of foggy area around the paper. I think that that will go away with the cardstock being thicker and kind of blocking more of that, but we're gonna try that now. You'll wanna clean your wheel off. Not quite. One more. We got tires everywhere. Yeah, that one definitely came out the best. All right, cool. So I decided to just cut out a negative and some vinyl, lay it on the tire, and spray it. This was actually a lot more finicky than I thought it would be. Um, the tire is a weird shape for vinyl. I couldn't really get the curve right, so I ended up having to kind of manipulate the vinyl a little bit to make it fit the tire well. But in the end, I think it turned out pretty good. That's it. Thank you.